right. Hi, everybody. I think we're all ready, set to go. Um, hopefully, everyone's able to hear me okay. Perfect. Uh, welcome. Uh, today, we're going to talk about all about all true and just a little get to know what it is that all true does and um, I'm really, really happy that you're all here. Thank you for taking the time to uh, join me today and um, yeah, just learning a little bit about uh, what we do behind the scenes, um, especially for those who have never used all true, um, you'll get to see uh, some of that fun stuff that we do. Um, hi, Madlen, miss you too. All right, so let's get to started. I'm going to share um, just a PowerPoint here with all of you. Okay, here we go. All right, so um, what is all true? Uh, it, so all true is. Um, uh, cloud-based software um, and it, the main company is called Blackbaud um, and Blackbaud is uh, the world's leading cloud software company um, and uh, they serve four regions, the Pacific, North American, Canada, and Europe um, and it, they are there to support corporations, foundations, higher education institutions, so universities, um, and nonprofits like us. Um, and they have different softwares. There's Razor's Edge, eTapestry, um, and then Altru, which is what we use, uh, constituent relationship management software for nonprofits, um, which helps us uh, really connect every department that we have um, into one system, which is really what we, uh, what OMA really needed, um, because just a little background, before all true, we had about three separate systems that um, that helped us uh, create all of these events and fundraisers and keeping track of volunteers. Um, so it sometimes it was difficult to either run reports or uh, make those connections. Um, for example, if uh, we're planning art after dark and um, we need to know how many people attended last year and how many volunteers we needed and um, what kind of tickets did we use, what were the prices. Um, we had to go to different systems to really find out all that information. Um, so really, All True was able to bring all of that together into one system, um, which is really, really great. Um, for those who have worked with All True um, and have um, been learning about all true along with us because we've had the system since March of 2019. Um, so we're still fairly new to it and we're still learning a lot as a team. Um, so uh, for those who have been learning with us, um, you know some of the uh, pros and cons of uh, all true and how um, really it's it's brought all the departments together and um, yeah it's been it's been quite an adventure um, but I think overall we're very happy with the results and um, yeah we're, we're still learning and we're still finding some really exciting stuff um, so I wanted to walk through what uh, what we needed to do to log in into all true especially for those who help us out in um, in the, at the front desk or in the store. Um, this is kind of just a get to know what you would normally do. And I'll share um, step by step how, how you would do that. Uh, all right, so um, you're gonna just click that Google Chrome icon, click on Home All True, which will take you here that says Blackboard ID. Uh, you're going to sign in with Google and then uh, locate the store desk. 
and then it's going to ask you for a password. Uh, usually, by the time you are at the museum, um, if you are helping out as front desk or store, um, let me just make sure I'm not missing any comments. Okay, great. Uh, so it, this is already logged in for you. Um, that is that is my goal or the VSR goal is that by the time uh, volunteers and other staff members are at the museum, um, we have this all set up ready to go. Um, but sometimes um, we just can't get to it for whatever reason. Sometimes there are other things that require our attention take a little bit longer than normal. Um, so if you are the one to log in to the store desk um, Ultra account, um, there is a place to locate the password. Um, we are in the works of um, locating that password in a safe spot so that it's not just out in the open. Um, and this password may change from time to time. So um, we'll definitely, I, I will definitely keep you in the loop of what that password is um, or any of the VSRs, uh, which would be Danny or Edward. Um, uh, sometimes it goes to, yeah, so Lou is uh, sending in the chat that sometimes it does go to sleep uh, and you will need to log back in. Um, the password to log back in uh, will, will most likely be the same password um, that you will need to log back in to all true. Uh, we try to make it as simple as possible um, so that, um, you know, because I, I also forget passwords as well. So uh, we try to make it as easy as possible for all of us to remember. Um, thanks, Lou, for that. Uh, so in this case, uh, we still have the same password as before. Um, and so it's uh, 58 capital O M A 395. And I have to look at my notes because I have not done that in a very long time. Um, all right, so let me just make sure I'm same chat box here. Awesome. Um, all right. So sometimes when you log into All True, um, if it hasn't uh, if been open for a couple of days, like it has now, um, or if um, uh, if there have been any updates overnight, it'll do these little pop-ups to let us know about uh, all the updates that it has been going through overnight over the couple of days. Um, so this is good to know, global membership extension. Um, so let's just close this out. All right, so this is your homepage at the store desk, and it's also your homepage for the front desk. Um, these are um, really all you need, um, and you're most likely going to focus on daily sales and advanced sales. Um, and so daily sales versus advanced sales, um, it's really just either front end or back end sales. Um, there are some uh, differences, um, but nothing too crazy. I prefer advanced sales whenever we're doing, uh, I'm doing a phone call transaction. I think it's a little bit more descriptive and it, um, and it shows everything on the screen uh, as opposed to daily sales. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So if we go to daily sales, um, it's loading up on there. Uh, it'll show you the tickets for the day, um, uh, all these discount options, um, membership, uh, to renew, um, you know, and the little easy icons of individual memberships and dual family memberships. So daily sales really is just that. Um, it, it makes it easier for the day sales. Um, like on the spot, someone's walking up to you and you can just sell them a ticket. Um, the important thing to know now um, because of the COVID changes, um, staff is working on um, creating a more um, regulated uh, 
ticketing process. Uh, we wanna ensure that everyone is safe and that we know um, who is coming in and at what time so that in case um, there is someone who is feeling unwell, um, they can reach out to us and then that way we can reach out to everyone who has been in the museum within that week or um, within the same time that that person was in the museum. Um, so we're trying to make sure to track everyone's attendance, um, which is why this looks a little bit different for those who have used daily sales. Normally um, the admission tickets would be blue, uh, which is our daily admission Ticket pricing, um, pricing hasn't changed. It's still the same. Um, it, the difference now is that ticketing is now a separate program from our usual daily sales. Um, so I'll show I'll show you what that means. Um, this is why these all say test because we're still in the process of testing them out. Um, so let's say we're selling an adult ticket and. Again, for daily sales, it would be for someone who's right there in front of us. Um, our goal is to make um, all ticket sales um, the least interactive as possible or physically interactive. Um, so we're hoping to uh, still be able to walk uh, the guest through the process of buying the, a ticket on their own um, on their cell phone or any other electronic device that they have um, but if for some reason uh, that person doesn't have an electronic device then um, this would be the process um, that we would uh, we would do um, so uh, let's say um, we're, we're technically in August. So let's look for next week on Thursday. Um, so the first step would be to go to that date and for some reason didn't click it through. Um, let's try this one more time. Here we go. August 6th. Um, next step, choosing the program and the ticket test admission tickets is that program that we're looking for to, to do a scheduled ticket for that guest. Um, and then the starting time. This would be um, the starting time for that ticket of when they will visit. So let's say I want to visit on the 6th of August at 11 a.m. Um, so it's processing that. And then the host is who is purchasing that ticket, which would be me. So um, there are several ways that we can look for a person, um, either just by last name. Um, you can type in the full name um, or just the first name. Uh, I always strongly suggest start uh, doing a search by last name because then it will pull up everyone on um, uh, with that last name. Um, and our, our goal also as a team is to ensure that we are not creating any duplicates um, because most likely, um, once we reopen, uh, a lot of our guests might not be in the system. It might be their first time visiting the museum. So, um, so we might have to create a, um, uh, just a profile for them, um, again, to make sure that we can call them back and, um, uh, or, or they can call us and we can uh, look them up and see when they visited. Um, if they are feeling unwell and then reaching out to everyone who uh, was visiting that same day. Um, so I'm going to sell a ticket to myself. Just going to punch in my last name, press enter. Um, and here are all the Mejias in the system. Um, so what I want to do is make sure to click on the one that says membership. That is for every guest that comes through. If they are a member, we want to make sure that it says membership on there. Um, so let's click on that one. And the reason why we want to pick the membership one is because that is uh, the most up to date profile for that person. Um, and um, 
it means that their membership is activated or if it's not activated it'll pull up the the date that it expired or that it's been lapsed and now you would get a chance to um to ask them if they'd like to renew which is another topic we'll cover uh shortly um but so let's continue on with this admission ticket um we want to make sure it says adult but if for some reason it's not an adult um which is the ticket that we clicked on on the left hand side um you can change the ticket to child senior student adult member military um and i actually i guess in a way did click the wrong one um i'm going to change it to adult member um this second part is also very important uh this is the the name of the person attending. So I am the person purchasing the ticket. I am the host and I am buying the ticket for myself. If it weren't for me, if it were for somebody else, this is where I would put their name. It's very important that we, um, we fill in those two spots because again, it helps us track uh, the people uh, a lot better. Um, especially during this time, we want to make sure that we have all the right information. Um, it's very, very important for, for everyone's health. So um, it's, uh, I'm going to put myself in here. And I already know that Sitli um, Mejia is in the system because I looked up my last name um, and um, I was already in there. So I'm going to put Sitli. Mejia and then click enter. Um, I have two profiles, but if I look here on this side, the lookup ID is the same. So it just means that there are either two, um, two differences or there, there's a difference between those two. Um, whether it's an address or a phone number, but it's one profile. Uh, oh. I'm so sorry about that. I meant to look at the comment. And um, let's see. Yes, um, my whole name got it. Uh, just want to make sure that I'm looking at everyone's comments in the chat and I'm not missing any questions. Um, and you're free to ask me any questions at any time. Stop me whenever. Um, I, I want to make sure that I'm covering everything and um, uh, making sure that everyone uh, understands where to click and how to process the tickets. So um, yeah, let me know. Let me know your questions or concerns. Um, okay, so um, I'm again going to click the general membership because that is that is what I suggest for every time you're selling a ticket. Always look for the general membership. That is the most up to date profile. Okay. Um, great, and now we have all the information. If there was still something missing, there would be um, a yellow, like a highlighted yellow box. It's, um, it's not a very strong color yellow, so it's good to just review all the boxes and make sure that um, you, uh, you're not missing anything. Uh, one thing I want to mention before I click save is that if you accidentally add another ticket. Um, so let's say I accidentally added a child ticket um, and you didn't mean to, uh, you can just click this square gray box and then click the delete uh, button on your keyboard and then press yes. Let's see. Um, what if they don't want to give their name? So that's a great question. Um, yes, uh, because of COVID, we do need everyone to give us their information. Um, it is for the safety of everyone. Um, and that is one of the, the regulations that OMA is uh, going to fall through with. We, we really, um, we really are sticking to that. We, we do need everyone's information 
um, to ensure everyone's safety? Um, so great question. Um, and if for some reason that person's giving you a hard time, um, look for a staff member um, for me or for Danny, um, um, and we'll we'll ensure that uh, it's communicated clearly to that guest that uh, that we it's crucial that we have that information. Um, we we just want everyone to be healthy and safe. Um, all right, uh, let's see. Uh, doesn't concern since we're yes. So um, the. Do, for docents um, and their responsibilities, we'll probably have a different training session on that, um, especially because of all the new exhibitions that we've had um, we've had installed over the uh, the last couple of weeks. Um, and then there's still one more that's being installed um, very soon. Um, we we felt that one deserved its own. Um, its own training. So it's in the works and I will definitely reach out to everyone and um, invite you all for when, um, when we have that ready. Um, all right, so now we're gonna click save. And it sometimes does this when it's the first ticket of the day. Uh, so just gotta be patient. All right. So uh, again, for uh, safety reasons, we need to make sure that we have everyone's information, um, not just their name, but the phone number and their email. Two forms of contact, um, because we want to make sure that we can reach you. Um, so uh, phone number and an email. Um, yes, even if they are a member, we want to make sure uh, we we get those two slots filled in because um, phone numbers and emails change all the time. Um, I know that sometimes uh, people create emails um, that are kind of like the, the throwaway emails. Um, well, we want to make sure this does not go to your throwaway email. Um, so we want to uh, we want to get that information from every guest. Um, so I would ask this this member, um, uh, what is the best one number to reach you, uh, and what is the best email to reach you? And here we have the example of that really faded yellow, um, but it, it it is a, more visible than than the other. I guess just the regular blank space. Um, so I'm just gonna write. Numbers, right? Maybe. Um, and then just write email at email.com. Save. Um, great. So now we have all of their information. Um, because members have free admission, uh, it shows the member discount of $8. Uh, whenever it's deducting money, it'll have parentheses around it. Um, when we take a look down here, the total is zero dollars. Uh, there's no balance. Um, and because we are uh, working on uh, restricting any physical interactions with people, um, we're just going to email the receipt. Um, if that email that they gave us for the form is different than this email, uh, we want to make sure to change that in here. So we would add it in here as well. To go back to the ticket information, you just want to make sure it's highlighted, click edit, and then you're back here in the window. So if for some reason they're like, oh yeah, my, my other email is the email I want to use. So there you go, updated, uh, email receipt, and complete. And then it'll do a loading uh, window, and then you should start fresh very soon. Um, it is a little slow on the first couple of transactions. Um, all right, so here we go. Um, one thing to notice on this uh, before I move forward is that there's always an order number here, all the time. Um, I think 
we were a couple months in before we noticed that there was an order number right there. Um, and then we figured out that that gets refreshed and a new number comes up after every order. Just one of those little things that we just keep on learning. Um, all right. So um, important things to know of other changes we've made uh, for daily sales are the discounts. Um, we are right now pausing the discounts just for a little bit. Um, not that they can't use uh, their student ID or uh, military ID um, or even just an OMA guest pass, um, but because we're trying to reduce the physical interactions and we're trying to um, encourage people to purchase their tickets online, um, they can't redeem uh, the at least the OMA guest passes or or their reciprocal um, NARM and Rome passes online. So they would have to come up to the front desk um, or meet the greeter who will be outside uh, of, of the building, um, checking temperatures, making sure that they bought their ticket, um, and just uh, keeping trap track of capacity. Um, if they have a if they have a gas pass and they would move on forward to the next station, which is the front desk, and um, and then we would be able to use the member member guest or staff guest. Um, there are other discounts that you can find on here on discounts and promotions. Um, it's a long list, which is why we don't show them all on the daily sales page, um, but there are quite a few on here. Um, each discount still requires each guest to answer both questions, the email and phone number, and then um, if they um, are uh, someone who's never visited the museum, we do require them to um, to give us their 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 full name um, as well, so that we can keep track of um, of that of their profile and just that person in general of when they visited. Um, this other new button that's down here is scan tickets. It's for the e-tickets. Um, so e-tickets are only available for purchase online. Um, and that is just uh, one way of encouraging everyone to purchase their tickets in advance. Um, and um, they'll be able to just pull it up on their phone and we'll be able to scan it, um, which just makes it super easy for us to check everyone in and um, continue keeping everyone safe. Um, so let me see, let me just go back real quick to my other screen to kind of show you what those e-tickets look like. Okay. So this is um, there go. Uh, this is what it looks like. Um, whenever you purchase a ticket online, um, it'll um, it'll send you two emails. One email with a receipt of um, of your of your purchase, and then one email to to that will take you to your ticket. So it'll look a little bit like this, um, this window up on top. Um, it'll say to name of guest, your email, um, thank you for your order, your tickets are not available, and it'll give you this link. Um, and if you have any questions, please contact uh, OMA. Um, and then uh, if they have their order number, even better, because then we can look it up a little bit faster on the back end. Um, and then that link will take you to this. Um, it'll just take you to another um, page on um, whatever uh, server you're using and um, it'll have the ticket number, the order number. Um, we're still working on the wording for 
for each ticket um, so that they, um, they know how to contact us if they are feeling unwell. Um, it'll show what kind of ticket it is, the time, the date, and um, the price for that ticket. Um, it does give you an option to print. Um, again, they don't necessarily need to print the ticket. Um, we, we won't um, need to accept the ticket. We just need to scan it um, or look up the ticket ID number. Um, so um, again, it lessens our physical interactions with everybody. Um, all right, so now let me go back to daily sales. Um, whenever they do introduce that ticket, you'll be able to click scan tickets. Um, and then here's where uh, either you would just scan it with a scanner and then it'll um, input the ticket number automatically on there. Um, and then it'll give you a chance to um, accept the ticket and then click save and um, the window will close on its own. Um, because it's already a purchase ticket, there, there's no need for any uh, monetary transactions. Um, uh, yeah, so it should be pretty easy. I'm very excited to, to use this, um, this new part of all true. So again, we're always learning something new. Um, I'm going to take you quickly to advanced cells. Um, so let me show that one more time. Um, the two spots where you were normally be in all true are all under this blue bar section that says sales. If you click sales, um, you'll see all of these options. Um, one that could come in handy is order search to look for that order uh, that that person made maybe online. Um, uh, but these are usually the two that you will be interacting with. Um, uh, if, if you do, oh, sorry, my watch is trying to interact with me as well. Um, if you do need a refund a ticket, um, I would suggest uh, either coming up to me, um, Danny or Edward, um, and we can help those guests with refunds. Um, doesn't happen very often, um, but uh, yeah, if you ever encounter anything like that, just let us know. Um, there's always gonna be at least one of us around. So um, yeah, you're, you're ne we're never by ourselves, um, which is a, it's a good thing. Um, all right, so advanced sales. Um, same thing as daily sales, but the setup is a little bit different. So um, we have select patron, which is just uh, a guest. So if it is um, someone that's already in the system, we would just ask them for their name um, and then we would look them up. Um, so again, different ways to search uh, for a constituent, um, then you could just do last name, enter, and it'll bring up all the Mejias. If you know their full name, you could do first name, last name, and it'll narrow it down. Um, if you want to do last name, comma, first name, that's also an option. Um, and it also brings this to these two profiles, which is the Actually, this is the same profile, remember, because it's the same lookup ID. Um, one thing to know about this search engine, um, for, for the name search engines, is that it is a little picky. So if you put in, and if it comes up, let's see, you put in this mesh, it'll, it'll still bring the, my name up. But if I miss a letter, let's see, I might still bring it up. That'd be really funny. Okay, it doesn't. So, um, which is what I expected. Um, I missed that one I in there and it automatically says no records found. So it's very important that you spell the last name right or spell the first name right. 
Um, this is why I strongly suggest you do um, just the last name um, because then it's less less typing that you have to do and it'll bring up um, all of those uh, with the same last name, but it'll still be a narrowed list. Um, so I would say stick with one, uh, either the first name or the last name. Um, if, um, if for some reason the last name's not working, um, punch in that first name. Uh, other things to notice on this particular section is that you can look up a phone number, um, you can look up an address, uh, state, zip code. So if they are sure that they should be in the system, whether because they're a member or I assume that because we're taking in um, uh, all that information now because of COVID, um, people will be a little bit more um, uh, assured that they're in the system. So um, this, this would be a way to be like, all right, well, let me look up your phone number and see if maybe um, whenever we registered someone new, we could have missed that one letter. Um, and so even if you're uh, typing in the last name correctly and it, it's not coming up, it could be that when we created that um, new profile, we just missed a letter. Um, and so the best way to find uh, or locate this um, person in our system uh, would be through a phone number um, or an address. Um, so th this is really important to know because it kind of helps uh, searching for a person, um, especially if um, if it's saying, I got nothing, there are no records found, but that person's sure that they should be in the system. Um, yeah, this is kind of a neat way to um, make sure that they, they are in the system. Um, all right, so um, once you put in the, uh, the name of the person who is making the purchase, um, again, daily sales and advanced sales, um, one's just the back end and the other one's the front end, they're day of sales. Um, and advanced sales is um, literally that as well. They're purchasing in advance. Um, so I'm gonna use myself again as an example. General membership. Uh, we're gonna go to create order. And actually, I'm going to back up just a little bit um, and go back to select patron because I want to introduce you to this section up here. Um, this shows all the info, um, their contact info, email. You have a chance to edit if for some reason um, they, they've changed their um, address or phone number. Um, I would strongly suggest um, using the membership slips uh, to update this information instead of updating it on the spot. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer to help that person out if you're going through these different steps. Um, so it's easier to just have them write it down and then um, either hand it to me or hand it to Vic, uh, our membership manager, who can help make those changes. Um, so that way you don't have to worry about it and um, then it can still be updated at a later time. Um, these are the active constituencies, which is just a way of describing um, the different ways that this person is involved in the museum. So, um, Sutli Mejia is an event registrant. She's um, an individual as opposed to a group or an organization. Um, she's a loyal donor, so she's donated before. Um, she's a member, a patron, um, a staff person, and then a volunteer. Um, and this doesn't necessarily mean that they're active now or that they um, continuously participate in some of these constituencies. Um, it could just be that they've, uh, they've volunteered at some point or um, uh, this staff constituency would um, 
if Seedly didn't work there anymore, I would say past staff member uh, or past staff. Um, it also gives you a, um, a breakdown of the membership. It's a general membership, staff, one year, and who is on that membership as well. Um, this was a test general membership. Um, we're doing testing all the time. Um, so this, that's why that one's in there. Um, but this one gives you an opportunity to renew their membership if, um, if that's what they wish to. If for some reason, it was July 31st, 2021, and um, Sidley came in to renew her membership or, um, or upgrade their membership. Um, it would also give you the opportunity to, um, to upgrade it once you, once you click that button. Um, all right. Uh, let's see, how will pens be managed if someone asks for one to fill out membership form? Yes, so um, we will be sterilizing the pens. Um, there will be um, two pen holders, one for the clean pens and then one for the used pens. Um, and then just in between helping out guests, we'll, we'll make sure to have um, everything that you need to, to clean the pens uh, either by disinfecting wipes. Um, well, yeah, that's basically disinfecting wipes. Um, so yeah, great question. Um, all right, so now we're gonna go to create order. And today is the date that's specified on here. It will show you everything that's available to purchase today. Um, not much is going on. Um, but let's say I'm going to purchase a ticket for next week. Same thing as daily sales. And I'll go a little bit faster because we've already um, seen, you've already seen me do that. But I do want to show you how to get there. So a specific date. Um, then you want to make sure to put in that specific date on this little calendar here. We're going to go to uh, August 6th. Um, and then it's very important that you click apply. All right, and then it'll show you everything that's available for purchase that day. Um, test admission tickets, here are the time frames. Um, unfortunately, these are some of the stuff that we had planned, um, but we're still planning things. There's still a lot of virtual stuff that um, is in the works. Um, uh, also, I wanted to make a donation, um, event registration, merchandise, which is, uh, so all of these buttons are available in daily sales. Again, this is just a back end version um, for any sales in advance. Um, if I am purchasing a ticket for 8, 6 at 11 a.m., which I already have, so I'm just gonna do like 4 p.m. Um, and we're doing an adult member, you would do one, register, and then I get the little questionnaire again. Um, numbers. Um, and then email. At email. Yep. There you go. So there's the order number, uh, the ticket, the delivery method. Um, and then in order to uh, input a payment, you have to go to the third step here, add payment. Um, again, it gives you a breakdown of who, who is purchasing that ticket or who's receiving that ticket, the method that they're getting that ticket. Um, and then here it gives you the options for payment. Um, in this case, this is a good example actually because I've already purchased the ticket. Um, as a member, I've already purchased a ticket. So depending on which level of membership you have, um, you have more than one free ticket or a ticket that's um, based under your membership level. Um, and because I've already purchased the ticket, um, even if I have a, a member ticket there available, um, it's not gonna sell it to me again. Um, it'll, it'll want me to put information on um, somebody else. 
Um, so uh, this is a good way to know that we're not we're not using the same name for the same person. Um, so we would have to go to edit um, and then click here on adult member and then change the name of that person on here. And again, it'll, it'll still be $8 because um, most likely that person um, with me might not be a guest or if they are another member, then we would just be pulling up that member's name um, and then it'll give them that discount. Um, yeah, we can change that to delivery, delivery method um, uh, by uh, making sure to highlight it and clicking it um, and then changing, changing it on here. We'll call, which is basically just there, pick up at, at the front desk. We don't do will call, um, especially now because we're trying to um, minimize our interactions with people. Um, so it, it's just best to, um, if it is going to be in person, um, uh, we can just still do an email because that way they can still receive a receipt and we don't have to physically in, uh, exchange anything. Um, yeah, and then you would just press complete. It won't let me complete it. So you no know, matter how many times I try to click on it, um, because it hasn't received a payment. So let's say I'm doing check. Um, it'll ask for the date of the check, which most likely is today. And then that check number, save. And there's the added payment on there. Oh, here, sorry. Um, yeah. There's zero balance. And now um, you can see it kind of changes the shadow on complete. Um, it's now activated so I can complete it. I'm not going to complete it because um, it'll just add another ticket and that one's actual money. Um, and I'll get um, an email from Dorothy asking me if I really stole the ticket. Um, all right, so I'm just pressing cancel, canceling the whole order. Um, and then it goes back to being blank. Um, yeah, so any questions? I know I just went over a lot of information, so I'd be happy to stop here and, and answer anything um, that might have popped up. Um, again, you're, you're welcome to um, send over any questions at any time, um, or if you want to just hold off to the end, um, I'll still take answers at the end as well. Um, one thing that I want to mention, um, uh, that I always do, but sometimes forget, um, is opening two, um, all true, uh, tabs, one for daily sales and one for advanced sales. Um, it just kind of helps you, um, maneuver your way around all true. Um, it also allows you to do, um, two separate things. So if you're trying to sell a membership to someone, um, I would do it in advanced sales. And if you have, um, let's say for example, someone's calling um, and they wanna purchase a membership, I would do it through advanced sales. And if someone's standing there trying to purchase a ticket, I would do it through daily sales. Um, so one way to make sure you have both of those windows open um, is by right clicking on your mouse over this tab, clicking duplicate, and then uh, doing that little drop down next to sales and then doing daily sales. Um, and now you have two tabs open. Uh, another thing that I suggest is opening another tab that takes you to the OMA website. This is a great way um, to learn about what's going on at OMA. Um, I, I don't want you to ever feel like you need to memorize any of this stuff. Um, you definitely don't need to memorize any of it. Um, that's why we're here. We're here to help you out. Um, uh, and especially about exhibitions because our exhibitions change so much. It's sometimes it's hard to 
um, just remember which one's upstairs and which one's downstairs and which one's Cleason. Um, so it's just, uh, it's really nice to have the OMA website open during the day because then you can just go to, oh yeah, what, how do you, um, what are the membership levels again? And how do you join Artist Alliance? Um, if someone's calling about, uh, volunteering, um, this would be a great way to, to just walk them through the phone and let them, letting them know that they can go to oma-online.org and, um, and then join and then just the drop down to volunteer. Um, let me just make sure, it seems to be a question maybe. Okay, I will get back to that. Um, this, uh, so I use the website a lot to, to help me answer questions, uh, especially about the different membership levels. Um, it kind of breaks it down for you. Um, uh, if, uh, if you're still trying to learn a little bit more about OMA, um, on quiet times, it's also nice to open up the, um, the OMA website and, um, yeah, just learn a little bit more about um, um, about what's going on. All right. Um, so then the last thing, um, oh, thank you, Adam, for checking the time. Okay, um, I'll just do this last one real quickly. Um, and it's um, just showing you how to sell a membership. Um, let me go back to my... Um, oh, so let me go through the slides. There we go. Okay. Renewing and selling a membership. Um, so these are the little slips that are at the front desk. Um, again, I would encourage you because of COVID to kind of more so um, give them the, e the OMA website and then just letting them know that you can just go to join membership and then pick whichever membership that they'd like. That is the best way to do it. Um, that way you don't have to have to interact with anyone um, uh, physically. Um, but if, um, if for some reason they don't have an electronic device, giving them a clean pen and then having them fill out this um, short questionnaire. Um, you need the primary and secondary members names, address, phone number and email. Um, you need to make sure to check off all the boxes, um, add the total um, all, all of all of those. Um, and then if they are there in person, you do not need to fill out the card information. We prefer that you don't because we don't want to keep that information on premises. Um, just another way to, um, to keep their information safe. Um, and uh, they would just have to run the transaction themselves. We are planning on having the card reader outside of um, the plexiglass so that they can slide the card themselves. Um, and uh, that way you don't have to touch anything. Um, all right, so just a quick, quick uh, visual. So let's say Carlos and Laura um, both want to become members. They are new um, and there's all their information. They're doing the patron level, which is amazing. It's that reciprocal member level um, that you would get through the patron membership. Um, they want to add Artist Alliance and then add a donation of $100, very generous. Um, their total payment of uh, $305. Um, so those are the main uh, points that you need to make sure to fill out. Um, the total is very important. And then this bottom section is very important because in case we are missing some information um, up here, then we know who to refer back to um, in case for some reason um, they had no email because they don't have a computer. Um, so um, I would be able to go back to Seatly and, um, and ask them, oh, why isn't there an email? Or was there um, a problem? Did we forget to ask them about the email? Um, and it'd be easy to either give them a call and just say, hey, sorry, we forgot to get your email. Um, all right, so just real quick. Um, 
uh, in Altro, how would we check that? How would we process that? I'm gonna go to daily sales. I'm gonna punch in um, Armadas. Uh, nothing comes up. I'm gonna go to add. And last name, Armadas. First name, Carlos. Um, and very important, while you, while you are selling a membership um, and they are standing right there, um, I strongly suggest just doing, uh, making sure that they, and this is the actual uh, slip, um, I would say have them fill this out and then um, in all true, just making sure you have their name and either a phone number or an email that can help you identify um, this constituent um, or that can help Vic identify this constituent. Um, in the system so that you don't keep them waiting there um, throughout this whole process because this this kind of takes a while to fill out um, so i'm we're doing the same thing in all true so it, it it just takes twice as long so um yeah it's just easier to put in at least a last name first name and a form of contact that can help narrow down um, on the back end and, and make sure to match this one with the one in all true. Um, so I'm just gonna do an email, which am artists at art.com, save. Sorry, this is taking a little bit longer, okay. So we wanna sell a membership and it's neither the dual or the individual. So you're gonna click memberships, join general membership. Um, you get this little pop-up. We wanna make sure to um, enter the right level, which is the patron level. The term, which is automatically one year because memberships at OML last for a year. Um, then down here, we want to check the member information. Carlos Almaraz is a primary member. He's the one purchasing it. And then that next person, we're going to look for uh, Aguilar. Click enter. There's a Carlos Aguilar. That is the wrong person. So we want to make sure to click on the magnifying glass. And then we're going to do uh, last name, Aguilar, enter. Uh, oh, it was Carol. Sorry about that. Carol Aguilar, that is not the person we're looking for. So we're also going to add Laura. Um, so Aguilar, Laura. Um, and we're just going to leave these blank. She's going to be attached to Carlos's profile. So it'll be really easy to help narrow it down on the back end. So we're going to do save. All right, make sure it says Laura Aguilar. Save. All right, there we go. Patron membership, 165. Now, um, they both wanted Artist Alliance. Um, Unfortunately, and fortunately, Artist Alliance is also a separate membership. Um, so Carlos cannot purchase the Artist Alliance for Laura in the same account. Um, La Laura has to make that purchase. Even if Laura is not there, um, we just need to pull up Laura's information um, and do the transaction under her name so that Artist Alliance um, membership level gets attached to uh, to Laura and, and not Carlos. And also, Altru will not allow Carlos to purchase two Artist Alliance memberships, so you wouldn't be able to sell him that second Artist Alliance membership anyway. Um, so you'll have to go to memberships again, join Artist Alliance. Um, we got Carlos Almaraz. Save. That's us one term, expiration date. It's from a year from now. It's not saving. Oh. Oh, interesting. Oh, maybe I pressed it twice. Oh, I did. It's right now. Yeah. 
somehow my mouse opened up a second one. Um, but see, it won't let you sell a second uh, Artist Alliance. Um, um, and then we want to add the donation of $100. Uh, so you would go donation, one, zero, zero, enter, and there's the $100. Um, the total is 285. And this is how um, you would input the amount of payment. So either clicking the exact amount if they're paying cash. Um, again, we're trying to minimize our physical transactions. So encouraging them to purchase that online is much, much better. Um, but if let's say that's the only option, that's what it would be. These are all cash. Um, Possibility. So if they give you 290, you would just click that. Um, if they're doing a credit card, you would click credit card or credit. You get this little window. They would slide the card, which is on the other side of the plexiglass. This will do um, uh, a little loading zone or a little loading icon, and then it'll close by itself, and the payment will get added down here. Just as just as it would um, with any other payment. Same thing for check, um, do the date, the check number, and then you would click save and the payment would get added on here. Um, now again, or in order to sell um, an Artist Alliance membership to Laura, we would have to finish this transaction um, and then um, look up Laura Aguilar and then uh, sell her, go to memberships, and then do join Artist Alliance. Um, so uh, that way they can both have Artist Alliance. Um, and then just make sure you click the email receipt. This is why it's really important to put in that email in there um, and, and then click complete. That way they get the receipt in their email um, and then there's the less interactions between one another. All right. Um, yeah, so that basically concludes um, a little bit about, or just a really quick um, uh, peek at what Altrue can do and what we've been working on in Altrue. Um, are there any questions that I can answer? Um, please know that, um, that uh, you can email me at any time. Um, let's see, will there be no touch payment methods available like Apple Pay? Um, at this time, we don't have any plans for that, um, but uh, we, are, we are looking into a possibility. So um, yes and no at this, at this moment, um, we're still not 100% sure. Um, yeah, good question. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, what about the gift shop, touching stuff? Um, um, oh, no, I, I actually haven't covered that, that yet. Uh, so uh, someone's asking about the gift shop. We um, are still in the process of figuring out the store um, because the store um, is a, a little bit cozier. Um, we're trying to see if we can move the store out into the lobby or out on the terrace. Um, and we are going to um, strongly suggest um, either putting on gloves if they're, uh, if they're inside the store, sanitizing their hands, um, everyone needs to wear uh, um, a mask at all times while they're in the museum um, or a face shield if, um, if for some reason they can't use a mask or are not able to um, for health reasons. Um, but yes, we're still trying to figure out the store um, situation, but we're, we're, we're excited and we're definitely, that'll probably be another training to make sure we cover um, how to maneuver our way through, through all the store um, guidelines. Um, okay. Um, yeah, well, thanks so much for, for joining us today. Um, it's really, really great to uh, virtually see you all. And um, I miss you all very, very much. Uh, thank you so much for being a part of the OMA family. I'm, I'm very, um, 
I'm very happy to know all of you and to, uh, to be a part of OMA and um, getting a chance to meet you all is, has been really, really wonderful. So um, keep sending me all your um, emails and comments. Um, again, if you have any other questions um, after this, let me know. This will be recorded, or this is being recorded. Um, so um, if, if you wanna go back and check anything, uh, you can um, check it out at a later time once we, we have it ready to be shared. Great. Um, okay, well, we will see you hopefully very, very soon. Thanks, guys. Thanks for, thanks everyone for being here.